Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome to episode number 22 of my Facebook Lives. And I will wait a couple seconds or a minute or so to see if anybody hops on, and then I will get started. Today is March 22nd. It's a beautiful day outside. I did step outside to see what was going on and hope to get outside a little bit later when I'm done with this. So we made it through St. Patrick's Day. Hope you had fun on St. Patrick's Day. Not like last year. Well, last year on St. Patrick's Day, I think we were actually shut down and the world had kind of come to a, a halt. So um, that's what happened then. And this is what's happening now. We're slowly coming out of it and everything is getting back to somewhat a normal, some kind of normal. So um, that's what we're doing. Hi, Gloria. Good to see you. Thanks for hopping on. So I will go ahead and get started. We've got one person showing up today. And I'm going to do something a little bit different. I always try to think about what can I do to be a little bit different. So, and show something new and always give a hint or a tip or some kind of trick to, to help you in your crafting um, episodes. So I'm going to use today the Stamparatus. I don't believe, and looking back through my my notes, <coughs> excuse me, hi LJ, that I have used the Stamparatus before on one of my lives. So I'm going to show how to use that, show you why you really should have this, and um, also a different type of card size. And hey, Fran and Nancy, happy Monday. So unfortunately, there's a glare on here. When I take these plates away, I'll explain that. But anyway, the Stamparatus is the most fabulous stamp positioning tool that you would want to have in your crafting arsenal. So if you have one, do you use it? If you have one, do you love it? If you don't have one, I'm going to show you why you need to have one. <laughs> so, with that in mind, let's get going. Stamparatus comes with two very powerful magnets, and I'll talk about those, and two stamping plates that basically take the place of having all of your different size blocks. So, these are perfect for that, and it also comes with a foam mat to be used for or used with the photopolymer stamps because they don't have any kind of cushion there. So that would go under your paper here if you're using photopolymer, and I'm not going to use photopolymer today. So I'm going to use just regular cling stamps and put that aside. Um, also available is uh, a pad of grid paper, and this grid paper is just fun to have anyway, even if you don't have a stamparatus, so you've got some kind of stamping surface. So that's what we've got with that, but back to the magnets. There are two very powerful magnets stored on the back. I keep painter's tape on there because they're so powerful, they're hard to pull off otherwise. So those pull off. They're far enough away from each other because they do not play well together. You don't want them to meet up in the sandbox in any way, shape, or form because they will break. And I'll tell you how I know that. It happened to me. Um, it's some kind of ceramic material, and it's very powerful. So... I'm only going to use one. Typically, I use only one. Um, the base of this, of the Stamparatus, is a magnet. So I don't know if you can see that with the, the glare that this provides, but anyway. So that will hold your paper down very, very well. So let's put this back on here and put 
that aside. Now, typically, you are going to put your cardstock up in the corner so it won't move. And let's see which one I'm going to use here today. I've got lots of paper cut. Um, put your paper up in the corner. But because of what I'm going to do today with this, I'm going to put my paper in the center of this. And I've already got a little mark for where I'm going to position this. And you might see that the paper is a little bit smaller than what is normally used. We normally use five and a quarter or five and a half by four and a quarter or cut it down a little bit for uh, go on a card base. So this happens to be three, three and three eighths, I think. No, this one's three and a quarter by five and three quarters. I've got some cut a little bit different size. So this is going to go here. And the reason I'm doing this is sometimes you say, I want to go off the edge of my paper. And you're encouraged to do that. Things don't have to be plopped right in the center. So go off the edge, and that's what I'm going to do today. So let me show you what I'm going to use. I'm going to use Ornate Style. This is the stamp set that was pre-released last year before our catalog came out. And it came out with Ornate Thanks. This year we have the butterflies. This was last year's pre-release, and I thought I would bring it out because I've not given it too much love lately, and I thought I would use this. But I don't want that whole stamp just plopped in the middle. I want it to go off the edge a little bit. So let's pull that out, and it's a cling stamp, and it's kind of big. And because you've got your stamp going on this plate, you want to, let me zoom in a little bit, you want to put something under this plate to act as a cushion so that when you stamp on it or put your ink on, on the stamp, it won't force that down. I hope that makes sense. So what I want to do is determine where I want this stamp to go. Let's move the magnet a little bit. And there we go. And I want some of these leaves to be off the edge, but I still want plenty of room at the bottom for a sentiment. So I'm going to position that there and then bring my plate over and that picks it up. Now, let me put the magnet back there. Okay, next, before I stamp this, I want to show you why you would want to have this second plate. Okay, I'm going to put this up here in the hinge, and I've got some markers back there that are holding on to that. And I want to add... Let's see, let's make this a happy birthday card. Add another sentiment that would come down here at the bottom. So I want that to be happy birthday. And this is perfect if you're doing, I don't think you can see what I'm, what I'm showing, okay. Um, if you're doing a mass amount of cards, you wanna make a whole bunch of birthday cards. Oh, hi Carol, thanks for coming. And you want to make a whole bunch of birthday cards or thank you cards, Christmas cards. This is perfect for Christmas cards. So I want this happy birthday to go down here. I know that it will not touch this one. So I'm going to pick that one up too. Okay, now I'm ready to stamp. So hopefully you can see everything. All right, there we go. So I'm going to use Memento ink, and I'm using Memento because I'm going to use our Stampin' Blends, the alcohol markers. And 
One of the other good things that this is perfect for, sometimes you think that you've got your stamp inked just perfect, and it's not, but let's see what we got here. Whoops, I think my magnet is a little bit in the way. There we go. So I'm gonna press down on that. And again, sorry for the glare. The glare will go away when I start coloring. So we're pushing down on that to get some pressure. And I lift it up and it's not as good of an image as I would like it to be. Okay, see it's very light. It's kind of light right there. I didn't get enough ink here. So I'm going to add some more ink. Just rub that on there. I know you can't see that part of it, but I want you to see how this is going to stamp when I do it again. And press that down. So there's no need to try and figure out or throw your paper away or turn it over and do it again on the other side. And especially with a larger stamp. Oh my gosh, look at the difference of that. It's perfect. Okay. And now I know you can't see this either, but I'm going to stamp that happy birthday up there at the top on that other plate. And bring that down. And now I've got my sentiment there at the same time. And I will zoom out and show you what I just did. There, I brought the sentiment down. And there it is. And then this was over here. So you can do this over and over and over and make a whole bunch of cards all at one time. Well, not at one time, you finish them, but get all your stamping done, then you can sit in front of the television and color or do whatever you wanna to do to finish the cards. So that is what we'll do with the Stamparatus. So I'm gonna pull this off of here. And before I do that, I wanna clean these. And last week I had a question about uh, when I was cleaning the stamps that I was using with the um, Easter card that I was making, and I used the Stamp and Scrub. I used this, and this is fine. This is probably good for the cling stamps, but um, this is more expensive. That's not bad, but it's more expensive. You can pull these out and clean them, which I recommend that you do frequently. You also need to have Stampin' Mist, and I apologize for this old, ugly bottle. I've had it for so long, and I just keep refilling it with uh, the Stampin' Mist. But, you've got a, well, back to this. You've got a side that washes and a side that dries. So it's like your stamp washer and dryer. But we've got, since we came out with the photopolymer, we've got this chamois. And this is actually half of a chamois. It comes in a really pretty purple. I cut it in half. And this is perfect for cleaning, not only cling stamps, but it's especially good for photopolymer stamps. So you don't get any, um, any fibers or anything on the, the photopolymer. So there, I just sopped up all of that ink that was on there and then I'll, I can dry it off. I'll do that back here too with the happy birthday. Um, these will dry out. You just run them under water to get it reconstituted and bring it back to life. It will not be pretty purple again, but just rinse it until all the color is out and it's perfect. So that's the difference of the two. Um, I strongly recommend the chamois. Um, it's e easily uh, transported and it fits in one of our um, stamp cases. So that's, that's perfect also. Okay, so let's get coloring. So I'm going to just pull these off of here. When you're finished, you want to pull these off of the hinges and then put that aside. So I'll just put that aside and put it back in its little case later. So now we've got 
our happy birthday card. And let's zoom in. Ooh, there we go. Whoa. Okay. Let me zoom out a little bit more. Okay. So that's good. And I'm going to use our Stampin' Blends. And I have Old Olive. And these come in a combo pack. You can't get them separately anymore. I have Calypso Coral and Daffodil Delight. They come in light and dark. So I'm going to start with, I've got, um, I'm gonna start with the leaves. And typically the way I color is to start with the dark first. You've got a bullet end and you've got a brush end. And because these are alcohol markers, they will dry quickly. Uh, your image will, will dry quickly. So I want to do only a couple of these leaves at a time. And they just color like butter. Oh my gosh, they're just awesome. Um, so I start with the dark and fill in with any other little shadow effect that's there and then come with the light and I use usually use the bullet end especially on smaller uh, details of a stamp and just fill that in and you pull your dark in and it just kind of pops off the page if you can see that and go on to the next one and you can go back over it again if you like and just keep pulling that color in and blending it. So now let's go to the next one. And since these are small, I'm not putting the, the cap on immediately because I know I'm gonna pull it back off again. The caps go on very tight uh, so the alcohol doesn't evaporate. And these will last a long time, so I don't wanna make it sound like uh, they're gonna evaporate right away. Um, but for the colors that you use a lot, I have replaced Old Olive and Calypso Coral a lot because those are my two go-to colors that I just love. So let's do a couple more of the leaves and one of the flowers. And fill this in. And let's save those other leaves. Okay, if you can hear this click, you hear that click, then you know that the, the lid is on tight. And let's do one of these bigger flowers with the Dark Daffodil Delight. And on this, I'm going to highlight the the shadowy parts on there, on those leaves. And then fill in with the lighter part. Okay, I'm not gonna do that whole flower. Let's go here. And you just pull that cap off. It might seem kind of hard at the beginning, but it will it will come off. And you can hear that squeak. There's a squeakiness with the um, alcohol. Actually, I think this Daffodil Delight is needs to be replaced pretty soon. I'm not going to finish coloring that yet and because I'm not going to bore you with all the coloring and then do um, with Calypso Coral Dark I'm going to 
just do the shadowy parts of this, these little detail parts, on a few of these flowers. In the dark, and then pull it in and blend with the light. And the Glypso Coral does look a lot like the uh, terracotta tile that's going to be our card base. And color these flowers here. There we go. All right, I had one of these started. Okay, so this one was started. So now I'm going to go back to uh, finish the leaves on this one. This one also does not have the happy birthday on there. And that's okay, because I'm gonna do something a little bit different with this. Um, and I'm not going to color the daisies. The daisies are gonna stay white. So let's go back and add, um, some more leaves to this and finish it off. Who's been outside today? Anybody? It is just gorgeous. And a little bit more here. And fill in with the light. And a little bit sound and squeaky. So that means it's doing its job. And a little bit more with the Calypso Coral over here. And I can get these done real fast. Um, this week, as demonstrators, we get to see a release of the new in colors. We also get to see a sneak peek of the new catalog. And that is exciting. Okay, there I'm using the brush end, but I don't think that's gonna work too well with these smaller images. So I'm just gonna fill that in with, go back to the bullet end again. If you go outside the lines, um, there is a color lifter that is also available. Um, it will take light smudges off um, so that you just maybe see a shadow of the, uh, the ink. But other than that, um, it doesn't really erase. Now with alcohol markers, if you haven't used them before, it does bleed through on the back. So you will always want to have a card base for your layer to go on because of the bleeding through. So I think that about finishes it. Um, I think this was more leaf part back here that I forgot to fill in. I think whatever these flowers are. Isn't it funny how we have stamp sets, Nancy, that we uh, kind of forget and don't give them enough love? And then we're very sad when they get retired, too. I totally understand that. All right, now I'm going to do something really weird here. Um, and on the daisies, since they're going to stay white, I'm going to take a mini glue dot and take the little spatula tool from the take a pick, take a pick tool, 
kind of keep that flat and add a mini glue dot to the center of these daisies. Okay, it's gonna clump up, but that's okay. It will still be pretty. I can flatten it there a little bit. Okay, and put another one in here. And wait till you see what's next. Okay, so another way to use a mini glue dot. We have this stuff that's in the stuff, I guess, for lack of a better word. It's called gilded leafing. And it's in the current January to June mini catalog. It's been on back order. I forgot to check this morning to see when this is coming back in. So I hope soon. And you get a whole bunch of it in this jar. Well, I probably shouldn't have taken it out of the jar to put it in another container because it's it's like has a mind of its own and it will land wherever you want it to land. So without taking this lid off, I'm gonna take a little piece of this gilded leafing and put it right on that mini glue dot. And here's another little piece. If I if I open the lid, it's it's like magnet or a staticky, and it goes all over the place. I'll show you something else I did with it too. And it's just so much fun. Um, so I can just tap that on there, and then you just kind of burnish it with your finger, and the part that doesn't have sticky on it goes away. So there I've got some gold in the center of that. Isn't that cool? This was designed to go with the art gallery stamp set where you stamp with Versamark and add, um, oh, forgot the name of it already. Uh, <laughs> Add heat and stick powder, that's it. Add heat and stick powder to your project, heat it with a heat gun, and then add the gold leafing. Oh my goodness, it's gorgeous. I don't have any project handy that I've used that with, but I do like it. So look at the gold in there, isn't that cool? You can also add it with a strip of um, tear and tape. And where's my little card here with the tear and tape on it? Oh my gosh. I was just playing away. Um, here it is. Here's another one that I did. And that's a piece of the tear and tape down along the side. And then add the gold leafing to that. So, you know, isn't that cool? Love the gold. All right, let's finish this card. So I've got the gold on there. And now, um, I'm not going to put a sentiment on this one right now. I can finish this one a little bit later. But I want to show you how to get a little cool little background on this. And I'm going to use one of our stencils. These stencils are, they were carried over from the holiday catalog and they're called basic patterns decorative masks so you could call it a mask you can call it a stencil um in fact if you got this month's paper pumpkin you got little masks or stencils in your paper pumpkin kit this does basically the same thing it does the same thing these are just six by six so you've got these trees uh, we've got this uh, little floor. No, this is like the flourish one. And I hope we get more. I hope these carry over because they're so cool. I don't know exactly what that is, like a, a modern leaf design. And then we've got these little polka dots. Okay. And there are directions with these. And actually, I just had a customer call and leave a message I haven't called her back. She says, I don't know how to use these masks or these stencils on my paper pumpkin. So I will call her back and give her some directions. Um, so I'm going to 
put this over my card base and use some old olive, old olive ink. And I know that our um, blending brushes, I believe, are still on back order. You can use a sponge like you got in the paper pumpkin. You can use um, a sponge dauber to do exactly the same thing. So as soon as these blending brushes come back in, I will definitely let you know, but I think they're due soon, very soon. So I'm going to use Old Olive, tap that here, and just kind of, I don't really want it that dark, um, tap where I didn't stamp, and just do some rubbing on there with some little polka dots. Okay, I hope it didn't slip. There we go. So it just adds a little cool dimension to the back of the card. And then I could add a sentiment there if I like. This is one that I did as a sample. So there we go with that one. And I didn't make it quite as dark. This one's a little bit darker. So now let me add this to the terracotta card base. Let's put these out of the way. Don't want to get ink all over that one. Add some Stamp and Seal Plus to the back. And put that on there. Then we'll have a sentiment on. Um, and then I will add something on the inside. So I want to move on and show you how to make an envelope for this. Okay, first of all, you can use a regular business size envelope. I think this might be a number six. I forget the number of it. The kind that you would put a check in if you're going to mail a bill. So this would fit in there. You can also make your own. And this is one of the few pieces of paper I have left from the ornate design, ornate garden, I believe it's called, designer paper. And it is a piece that is six, excuse me, eight and a half by nine. Eight and a half inches by nine inches. And I love to make my own envelopes. Um, I was very sad when they eliminated the, oh, the envelope um, maker that we had a number of years ago. It was made by another company, and I don't know what happened. But anyway, I love it. I still will use it. But this is one that you can make with any size paper that will go with this and get it on your, get it made for your card. So, <coughs> excuse me. So I'm going to score, I finally got a scoring blade for this, at one inch. Wait, is this, did I do the right side? Yeah, on the eight and a half side. Whoa. One inch on the eight and a half side. So it's eight and a half by nine. And then move it down to seven and a half. Or just turn it over and do one again. That's even better. Rotate it one turn to the left so that we're now at the ninth inch side. And score it at two and six. So I'll do the six first. And move it down to the two and score again. And that's it. And with the 12 by 12 paper, if you're making these cards, there would be enough left over to make your card um, a panel for your card. So there's you wouldn't have too much waste on a piece of 12 by 12. So 
So I'm going to go ahead and, with the score lines, turn this. Because sometimes it's hard to see where your score lines are, especially with the double-sided paper. So now what I want to do is snip off these bottom parts on both ends. and snip up to the score line. Flip it over and do the same thing here. You'll notice that one is deeper than the other and that's the part that is the bottom part of the envelope. And I did make one of these with a piece of regular computer paper. And my computer paper is a little on the thin side, so you can do it. You just have to be careful that you don't cut through it when, you, um, when you're doing your scoring. This is one that I did with just a piece of computer paper. It's almost the same quality as the uh, regular ones that you buy in the store. Okay, so now what I want to do is put a little notch, like a little wedge, on the side flaps, like a little piece of the pie, and snip it in up to the corner, and a little bit here, there we go, and There we go there. I don't think I cut that one very well right on the line because it's sticking over a little bit. Um, and then you might say, well, how am I going to put that in the mail? Well, I would probably take a sticker or a piece of computer paper and maybe put on the outside of the envelope and wrap it that way. Okay, so now we just need to put it together. So you want to put your adhesive on this larger flap. And then fold your sides in and fold it up. And the last thing that you can do is corner round the edges of your envelope. We've got this triple punch that has a little eyelet for putting ribbon through, and a cute little design here, and a corner rounder. So I'm just gonna, it just adds a little bit more, you don't have to do it. Put that in there so it corner rounds it. You can see that. And put that around there. So there's our card ready to go in the envelope and go in the mail. I just, I've fallen in love with these little minis. I think they're so, so cute and add some paper inside for writing your text. In fact, I put one in the mail this morning to a friend who's, who's having some tests run this week. Um, let me show you some cards I made this morning with the butterfly. I love these. So let's see, who's gonna get them? Um, and I did it the same way. Okay, this one is just a monochromatic, although I used a different color here on You Make the Ordinary Extraordinary. And this is with, um, what is that, what's the color going away? Um, I've lost the color. Nancy, help me. The in color. It is Pretty Peacock. Yes, yes. This is Pretty Peacock. And I've not finished it with anything on the inside yet. So there's Pretty Peacock. And I just love that. And here's another one. And how did I do that? I made a template by cutting the dies through a piece of paper and then putting that over the, the paper and coloring it in. 
so you can just color them in. It's so so cool and so easy. So there's that one. Here's one, just hello, with different colors. And this is on Seaside Spray, another color that's going away. This one I didn't stamp. I just used I just used this template to color in the different colors. And added a little, little twine there and hello. Here's another hello. And this one is on Rococo Rose, another color that's going away. In fact, I think this one might be gone already or pretty close to being gone if it's not gone already. And a different type of hello there with some twine behind it. So this is my latest addiction for making little slimline cards and envelopes. And here's the one we had for today. And I had a couple more. So I got on a roll with these, adding some gold envelopes and I guess that's it and they're so fast and so easy so I hope you enjoyed today and come back next week and see what I have in store I'm not sure what it'll be yet but um, it's always exciting and I look forward to it and I will see you again next Monday at 3 30 take care stay safe stay healthy bye bye